Right, well, I make it five o'clock. I think we have everybody here um, who is supposed to be here. So if we could start the meeting. Are we on YouTube? We are, Chair. Right, I'll start the meeting then. Uh, good afternoon and thank you for attending this virtual meeting of the Scrutiny Budget and Performance Panel. For those who don't know me, my name is Councillor David Howarth and I'm the Chair of the panel. Please note this is an audio and visual video meeting. It's being recorded and the stream will also be live on YouTube. The web address for this is displayed on the Council's website. Members are asked to keep their microphone on mute and only unmute when they wish to speak. The relevant Cabinet member and officers will present the report and I will then invite panel members to ask any questions. If any panel members wish to speak, you should unmute your microphone and say your name or use the raise your hand feature and I will then invite you in order. There will then be an opportunity for any members not on the panel to ask any questions. If the technology fails and I will adjourn the meeting for several minutes to try and resolve the issue or if this is not possible, a new date and time will be organised. Please can I ask all members to confirm they can see, hear and speak before the meeting begins. I'll call out each member alphabetically. Councillor Will Adams. Yes, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Colin Coulton. Sorry, Councillor Coulton, could you unmute? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Sorry about that. Councillor Colin Sharples. Yes, thank you, Chair. And Councillor Karen Walton. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'll now introduce our officers and guests. Our officers uh, this afternoon are Darren Cranshaw, the Assistant Director of Scrutiny and Democratic Services, and Charlotte Lynch, the Democratic and Member Services Officer. Uh, our guests are Councillor Paul Foster, Leader of the Council, Councillor Matthew Tomlinson, Cabinet Member for Finance, Property and Assets, uh, Gary Hall, the Interim Chief Executive, James Thompson, the Section 151 Officer, and Vicky Willett, the Shared Services Lead, Partnerships and Transformation. Um, so I will now open the meeting and ask for apologies. I believe we're all here, so we don't actually have any. In which case, item two, are there any declarations of interest? In which case, if we could move to item three, minutes of the meeting held on Monday, the 3rd of August. Um, can we agree the minutes? Uh, a nod will do at this stage. Right, Colin's agreed. <laughs> will, I can't see anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll second those, Chair. Right, thank you. Uh, we all agreed, yes. Thank you. Uh, item four is matter, matters arising from previous meetings uh, which have been circulated. Are there any matters arising? In which case, can we note the response to previous recommendations uh, and that those completed be removed from the matrix? Uh, just a hand up will do. Thank you. So that was read. Um, that then takes us to item five, which is the period one April to June quarterly performance monitoring report 2020-21. And the leader of the council, Councillor Paul Foster and Interim Chief Executive Gary Hall will present this item and answer the panel's questions. Uh, Vicky Willett, the Shared Services Lead for Partnerships and Transformation, will also be on call to assess, assist if necessary. So if I could invite you to... Um, submit the report. Thanks Chair and uh, good afternoon to the uh, to the committee. Um, I'll crack straight on because time is of the essence Chair. So this is the Q1 monitoring report, corporate monitoring report, sorry, for April to June 2020 and clear this is when the Covid restrictions had kicked in fully. During the period the Council mobilised a highly effective and proactive response to Covid-19 across the borough. Despite of this though, the performance of the corporate plan has been maintained with 85% of the projects on track exceeding expectations or complete. And then as it says at, on page eight, paragraph seven, the intelligence and experience gained through the COVID response will most certainly shape the approach and service delivery moving forward 
through the refresh of the corporate strategy and priorities to be presented to the council for approval in September 2020 and we'll have that later on on the agenda tonight chair we now clearly have an understanding of the areas of vulnerability and how we can better support residents and communities to increase over or resilience um, six projects have been paused for review pending the refresh and to ensure that activity and resources directed to meeting the needs of the residents through the recovery phase which we are now in and these projects are clearly all identified at um, appendix one as the report says and at appendix one is all the detail um, chair of the performance the exact performance data for the q1 2020 2021 and i've don't wish to go through any particular detail, but Gary and I are here to answer the questions you and your committee may have. OK, thank you. Uh, perhaps if I could start then and take you to page nine, paragraph 15. When we last received the performance report, we asked about potential efficiencies uh, from the increase in online transactions and a benefits realisation piece was being developed. Uh, where are we up to with this and are we making efficiencies? Thank you, Chair. I'm happy to take, uh, take that question. So um, a draft uh, benefit realisation uh, plan or benefit realisation assessment has been done. Um, we've taken that through the leadership team. It's gone back for some tweaking. So again, I can anticipate that in the, at the, account, at the next meeting of the panel, that information will be available. Um, just to answer your wider point is, are efficiencies being made? In? The, uh, what I would say is opportunities for efficiencies exist. There are some direct uh, efficiencies from moving online, uh, and from using different pieces of technology, but the biggest opportunity for saving is staff efficiency. And there'll be a decision for council as to whether uh, we take those staff efficiencies or not, as the case may be, and that'll be a choice for council. OK, thank you. Uh, could I bring in Councillor Sharples? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm referring to uh, page 9, paragraph 15. The new website will be introduced in autumn this year. What additional functionality will there be and what difference will our residents see in the way we deliver our services? Will there be an online chat facility like you say on other websites? But you got a cane now, aren't you, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, just in terms of, um, we all know that the um, uh, the website is quite dated or looks quite dated. So, um, so there'll be a big refresh uh, that will include um, uh, a branding update, and again, uh, members will see that coming forward fairly shortly. In, ter in terms of the functionality, a lot of the functionality that exists, Colin, um, will be replicated in there. Um, but the, there are two, I think there are two key things that we uh, we need to do. One is we need to um, improve the experience. So um, it sounds about quite technical this, but basically the number of clicks that you need to get to the information that you want. People get very bored really easily uh, working through websites. So all that will be improved. There will be a chat facility uh, as you suggest, which will be this kind of more modern uh, websites uh, allow. And the, the key with any uh, website is making sure that the information on there is up to date and relevant. Um, so again, if you spend any time working through the website at the minute, you'll see that actually it's, there's a lot of information out of date and not relevant. So um, there'll be three big changes to um, to the website as we uh, as we enable it in the next well two two months uh, to be honest. Yeah, uh, Chair, uh, sorry, Colin. The the, the we're, I've been looking at the beta. I think they call it of the website recently, and it and it and it is much improved. And I think one of the main areas of improvement, not just the visual appearance, but um, when it comes to the likes of making payments, making payments is much, much simplified because I think it is a criticism um, many of our residents have had over the years is the, the current online facility is not user friendly whatsoever. Um, the new system is user friendly. And as I say, we'll speak to Paul Hussey as soon as the, the beta version is ready, we can send the link out for you just to all to have a look at because I think you'd be quite, quite uh, impressed with it all. Yeah, thank you. That sounds very impressive. The uh, the previous essay of the pudding will be in the eating, I guess. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Adams. Thanks, Chair. Uh, just taking you to page uh, 10, 
paragraph 19 now. Uh, what is the reason for the review of surplus assets, uh, key projects being off track? Um, asset management is something scrutiny has taken keen issue over recent years with limited progress being seen. Um, please, could you talk us through the council's approach to its assets, um, how they are managed and the potential improvements you'd like to see as well? Thank you. Thanks, Will. The, 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 before Gary comes in here, one of the problems we had is the, the, the council has been promising to do a review of its assets for a number of years now and it's never actually taken place. So we don't, to, to have a strategic view about what we want to do with those assets is, is quite difficult. So the officers are, are, out, are out now, we, we're, you know, we're doing a, a number of surveys, condition surveys for example, um, because I find it amazing, one of the things with the assets is that we, we have to insure them, we have to put maintenance programs together, but we've never done actually any detailed work behind the scenes to understand the condition of those assets. And so we need to see and understand as, a, as an administration, as a council, where those assets fit in our overall strategic plan. Do we retain the assets? Do we use the assets differently? Do we make revenue from those assets? So that's what the, that's what the strategy is all about. And it's something that's well overdue as far as, that, as far as I'm concerned, and it needs doing as quickly as possible. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you, Chair. So, yeah, just in terms, again, just to endorse uh, what Paul says, is you, you can't make a decision on what you do with an asset without information. Uh, and the information you need, it, we're, we're collating. Uh, yes, it has taken a little longer. Um, I think I've flagged this issue up before in terms of uh, some of the performance reports uh, around access to skill sets, uh, particularly in property services and estates. That's been a real challenge. Um, we now have uh, those resources in place. Um, we're getting, there is a backlog uh, in both in terms of maintenance, there's been a backlog in terms of asset reviews and rental reviews and all sorts of stuff. Um, so, you know, we, we're getting back on, on top of that now. And, um, you know, we've got the skill set, we've got the resources in place now. So we will make progress on these things now. Can I come back, Joe? Is that all right? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Will the um, that kind of work? Will that look at also uh, equipment that we, the council, use? You know, from tablets, mobile phones to machines to vehicles and things like that. No, no, it's it's fixed. What I will call a fixed asset of property. It's property based review. Thanks, Chair. Okay, uh, Councillor Coulton. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, page 11, the top table, which uh, shows a reduction in income uh, generated. Uh, what imp uh, impact will have this? Uh, will this reduction have on the council? And does the conference and business centre have a sustainable income model that will generate a surplus for the uh, council? Um, thanks, Colin. Um, yeah, it has, and you'll see in the budget monitoring report that um, I think that the committee are looking at later that, that Matthew is delivering that the, there has been a significant loss of income from the conference facilities here at the Civic Centre um, because of COVID, because we can't let the place out basically. And if you remember, we had all sorts of plans, and the, the team had got the, the Civic, as it's now known, up and running, and it was being used basically all the time when we were generating, if you recall, we we're overperforming. Um, so this is really disappointing, but it's completely outside of our hands. And then I suppose the one of the other issues you may have picked up on is because of the because of the our inability to use the facility now, we don't know how long this will be for. It may be just for another six weeks, it could be for another six months, it could be another 12 months before we can start letting the facility out, we just do not know. So we've instructed a pause into any more capital investments at the Civic Centre for the Civic until we're more comfortable with what we're looking, um, where we're looking with the COVID recovery so that we're spending the money at the appropriate time in the appropriate places, Colin. So yeah, it is disappointing. Um, it has had a financial impact and we're just, there's, there's, there's nothing we can do about that at the moment. We, we keep closely monitoring it. You okay uh, can, I, can I just yeah. come in again? Uh, well, obviously, I realise that there 
you know, it's obviously it has some effect on the council, but how worried should we be about the financial effect of this uh, lack of income? Yeah, th uh, thank you, Colin. Yeah, so just in terms of this specific piece that we're reporting on, you know, the um, the levels of income generated are uh, not material, not what I would call material to the sustainability of the council. So we're not reliant on it, um, but obviously it will have an impact. Um, you know, there's some wider, bigger pieces of impact that are set out uh, in the monitoring report that no doubt uh, Councillor Tomlinson and James will. Uh, elaborate on as we move through that report. So not not critical to uh, the financial sustainability of the council, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Mrs Walton. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, my question is on page 12, uh, paragraph 22. How will the success of the Active Streets initiative be evaluated? Is there a timetable of areas to be replicated across the borough and how will they be assessed and resources allocated? Yeah, Nick? Uh, well, I mean, I, um, I've met with the sports development team. Um, the Active Streets uh, project is uh, largely being confined to areas within Leyland and the, those streets that have been um, visited and been part of the project have reported um, uh, it being a great success. Uh, certainly we've been able to uh, engage with a, a number of, uh, of, of families um, and it would be the hope that we would be able to sort of um, you know, promote that and, and spread it out across, across the borough and it would all be part of our uh, aim to try and get sort of the access to activities uh, out to in, into those areas that would would need it most. Um, so, but I mean, I've I have asked the sports de uh, development team to sort of do a report for well, for council or for us to promote it to just to see uh, how successful it has been. Um, uh, so, yes, so please to report that and hopefully we will develop it. Can I? Chair, if I could just, oh, uh, Chair, if I could just maybe add something, Karen. So, yes, my, yes. My, my recollection was that there were a number of um, uh, outcomes that we wanted from uh, this piece of work. Uh, one was engagement uh, with families um, to encourage them into activity and those kinds of things. But um, the report that went talked about um, measuring things like reductions in antisocial behaviour and those kinds of issues. Now, it's a bit too early in the in the cycle, really, to establish whether all those things have been successful. So what we'll have to do, Karen, is come back to you with a bit more detail once we've yeah, yeah. Um, worked those things through. And of course, we're, we're now getting into the winter period where antisocial behaviour in, in generally increases. So the evaluation will be later on in the year. Okay, I, I would appreciate that. Chair, can I ask another question, please? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, on page 13, it's about uh, the Leyland Loop. Um, when Could you tell us when has the part of the loop been completed and where it was completed? And can you give us any information on what the less complex scheme will be in the future? Just before Gary kicks in, Karen, the, the, we'll yep. send you. We'll get the officers to provide you, send you out the, the map with all the details, because that's probably okay. the, 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 yep. the, the the most information for you. But when it's mentioned in the less complex areas, I think that's coming down to land ownership. So where we've got simple land ownership, where we can get um, approval, straightforward approval, just to, to proceed, that's what we're doing. Unfortunately, some of the areas on the Leyland Loop are quite complex with the land ownership, or we can't ascertain who the owner is, and that's where that's what that refers to. Where it's been more challenging. Okay, so I look forward to the information you're going to provide. Thank you. Could I just ask that um, all of the panel members receive that? If you could copy the other four of us in as well, please. Is that a yes? <laughs> Sorry, yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. Thank you. Uh, can I bring Councillor Sharples in? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, 
page 12, paragraph 24 talks about homelessness. A number of homelessness, home, a number of homelessness interventions have taken place. What has the outcome of these interventions been? Have all 60 households in temporary accommodation been provided with permanent accommodation? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so thank you, Chair. So, um, uh, obviously, dur during COVID, uh, there was a, an aspiration from central government to deal with um, the homelessness issue. So, um, all those who were at risk of homelessness were housed. Uh, during that period. Um, so whether um, we had uh, a duty to house or not, um, that, that really was disbanded and everybody who was potentially homeless um, uh, was provided with temporary accommodation, uh, mainly uh, in hotel uh, accommodation. The, the opportunity arose during that period to start to think about, well, how do we deal with some of the longer term issues that a number of homeless people have? Uh, um, why do they continue to be homeless? And will they engage in programs of work, um, or not work, programs of uh, help to try and establish some of those and deal with some of those causes, whether that be debt, whether that be uh, drug or alcohol abuse or mental health, uh, a variety of different issues why people become uh, homeless. So. Um, I have to say during this period that the, the, the partnership working improved significantly uh, over that period because obviously it was mandated from central government that actually you now will uh, deal with this. So interesting, lots of partners. Uh, we have on for some time been asking for more support into these spaces. Vicky, you might want to come in at this point. Um, but, but all of a sudden partners were now able to do some of the things that they couldn't do uh, pre-COVID. Um, so um, that that program has uh, continued. The arrangements are now in place to uh, get better wraparound support, I suppose, uh, for individuals um, with homelessness issues. The, your question uh, about whether everybody has been housed, the answer to that is absolutely not uh, on a permanent basis. So there is still a number still in temporary accommodation and still receiving support. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if I could bring Councillor Coulton in again. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm looking at page 40, page 40, paragraph uh, 32. Uh, we've increased the number of uh, brown bins for the uh, green waste, which is exceedingly good news. The fact that we've got more. Uh, brown bins in circulation must increase the revenue that we've got from that. So does would that increased revenue allow us to reduce the cost of the brown bins <laughs> even further? So the the, the um yeah the the the, the um the, ch the challenge we have here is that the we've obviously clearly reduced it by just under 20% when the new administration came in, Colin, um, and there's now been a slight increased uptake in the number of individuals that are paying for that service. That could be that it's because the cost is cheaper. It might not, we, we don't know, we haven't got that evidence yet. It could be that it's just, um, it's advertised more thoroughly ac ac across the borough. But where we are now is the we, we did a significant saving that 20 percent of the revenue so as we're standing currently we're not budgeting at the moment for any further reductions but as you know colin the new administration is looking at every way it possibly can to re reduce taxation on our local communities and this was one of the one of the areas that we promised that we would look at and we and we delivered so we're always looking at options but there's nothing on the table just yet Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, if I could come in with a question here. Uh, on page 25, the second table, how will the Youth Council project target hard to reach young people? So, sorry, 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 David, was it paragraph or page? Oh, sorry, page 25, yeah, second table. Effectively, with the Youth Council, um, you tend to get perhaps the uh, 
swattier kids, if you like. So how are we um, going to target hard to reach young people? Yeah, I mean, obviously a kind of decision needs to be made about uh, what cohort we have uh, and how we're going to uh, make sure that it's representative uh, of young people. I suppose, um, <laughs> sorry, the screens have gone off. Um, you know, that's really down to council efforts uh, more than anything and targeting um, certain um, uh, cohorts to make sure that we get that balance right across the piece. So I accept your point and that generally does happen. Um, we'll just have to try and see if we can get a, a number of people who might not normally be interested in these things uh, interested in and, and into, the, uh, into the work. Um, and, uh, and I think Aniela's going to come in at this point. You know. Yes, I hope you don't mind. Um, what part of the process is um, debate clubs? So I'm anticipating hopefully that officers will go into schools, run debate clubs, get children, like break the ice with um, learning how to write speeches. I've done this myself. I did it in Farrington when I was a governor there. Um, and some of the kids, um, which the teachers wouldn't normally have thought were interested, actually became engaged and they wanted me to go back every week um, and you know those it, that Farrington is in quite a deprived area um, and I got a really good engagement so I think it's how we start the process um, and I think if we get officers to go into schools and what, what I did was speech writing um, I did opinions about how people's opinions aren't necessarily facts and tried to get them to because they're going to be going on social media and things like that so it's about educating children who potentially going to secondary school about how to to do how to give them those skills basically thanks thank you I'll, i will await the outcome uh councillor mrs walton yes thank you chair uh, my uh, question is concerns uh, on page 17 the borough air quality action plan References made to the implementation of timescales being extended. Do you have a revised timescale and what is being done to bring this action back on track? And has working with other partners been improved and increased? So, so th thanks, Karen. The, the clearly, and, and I hate saying this, but I'm, I'm going to have to say this. This is one of the, again, one of those areas that the COVID impacted on hugely. Um, because we couldn't, we just couldn't do the work. We couldn't get to the schools. We couldn't do the anti-idling campaign. Um, but we're, what we are is now back on it, big time, trying to get these things up and running again as quickly as possible. And I think it's, um, I, I can't sit here and give you dates to today of exactly when we will be back on track. But there is a view that the officers are working uh, jointly with us, with the administration at the moment, that the Q2 um, report does contain detailed dates, new revised target dates of each of the main corporate priorities so when we so that we know when we will get them back on track because clearly there's still some staff unfortunately some areas still furloughed as well so it, it's a, we are challenged with with, with 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 confirming dates but I think Gary's going to come in now Karen yeah, I mean, yeah sorry um, chair Karen this so so again this is going to be impacted unfortunately by Covid for quite some time so uh, clearly a number of officers who might ordinarily have spent uh, some time on this uh, particular priority uh, are being kind of redirected into Covid work and um, you'll have seen from uh, recent government announcements that actually the government's actually asking the local government to do more in, in a number of areas, marshalling, yes, yes. track and trace, a whole raft mm -hmm. of new asks. So um, that that that's a real challenge. Not 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 just in case of uh, resources, but access to skills. You know, there aren't necessarily uh, a people out there with the skill set to do all these things. So we've got some real challenges in terms of balancing uh, the uh, the impact of COVID and the ongoing impact of COVID, which we all now know. Is going to be for some time to come and the business as usual stuff but as the leader has said we will come back having considered this with a more detailed assessment of when we'll get things back on track in the next quarter report okay thank you thank you uh councillor colton thank you chair uh page 31 uh, uh appendix two uh as i said the council's uh, response to the pandemic has been really, really good. Uh, 
But what concerns me, have we got the capacity to maintain uh, our response to the pandemic and you know, to provide the support that the residents need? And what proactive work is planned going forward? Hi, uh, Colin. And firstly, I think the thank you for your, your positive comments. The staff will really appreciate that because, as you know, that they, they have bent over backwards um, over the last uh, four or five months, and they'll be pleased and they'll be and t t to hear your comments. Um, the uh, you might have. I don't know if you've got me bugged, Colin, because we've had a meeting this very afternoon about with with Gary uh, and Mick and the officers about how we, we we're understanding now that we do need some more staff to support the cut just to purely support the covid recovery um as gary said earlier that we've been asked to do test test the circle test track and trace needs um our support the um the the marshals the community marshals i can never remember the name and um, there's just there's just so much to do and one of the points i made colin today is i think we're turning a corner of some to facing some really really more challenging times with the run up to christmas and you know we've, we've seen that the, the infection rates are going up across the board and they're going up in South Ribble as well so the answer to your question is direct is yes Gary is now looking at resource and we are looking at putting some more resource in place um, and we need to do that quickly but the, 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 the challenge we face we don't know whether we need that resource for six months or three years you know we just don't know where we are but what we want to be is proactive looking at this now rather than reacting to this in two or three months time um, and, it, and it is a challenge but no there's going to be some more specific COVID support officers that Gary's bringing in. Okay. Uh, Councillor Adams you wanted to come in at this. Thanks Chair. This is a, is a, an offshoot of that really um, and just due to my some of my work on the um, the business recovery working group as well at council uh, some of our local uh, businesses who are tenants of South Wales Borough Council received a letter pre-COVID about regarding potential uh, increases in rent can you please update us regarding those potential uh, increases or not uh, for tenants is uh sorry chair is Matthew on the call Matt Thompson I am down can you hear yeah yeah we can yeah Okay, so um, we did, as Councillor Adams has said, we did uh, begin to contact our um, tenants. Towards the end of last year, beginning of this year, uh, many of those tenants haven't had a rent review for a number of years. Um, and so we contacted them, conversation really about uh, what rent might be in the future. Um, as, as of now, no decisions have been taken. Um, but I do still think it's appropriate that we have those conversations. Um, as I say, if you're operating a business um, in a place that hasn't had a rent review for such a long time, um, despite the circumstances that we're in, I think it's entirely appropriate that we have those conversations. But they are conversations, they are negotiations. I've seen stuff on social media saying, you know, we were demanding extra money. Can I just be really clear? We haven't demanded any extra money from anybody. Um, in fact, as, as members of the committee will know, all of our tenants have had a, um, a three-month holiday from rent um, during the, this crisis. Um, but I do still think it's, it's appropriate that we have those conversations and those negotiations um, and those will continue as things settle down. Oh, thank, thank you, um, Councillor Thompson. I think... Um, to be honest, a lot of conversations I've had with many of the businesses have, uh, have highlighted the point that the council have provided excellent support, not just with the holiday, but also, um, you know, ongoing conversations with officers as well. So uh, I think there's a, a lot of good work being done and I, uh, I look forward to having those conversations with you and uh, local businesses as well. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, at this point, are there any questions from members who are not on the panel? If that's no. Uh, no, thank you. Um, in which case, could I ask Darren to um, let us know what our recommendations are? 
Uh, Chair, some of the themes picked up during the meeting have included that the panel thanks the leader and the chief executive for their detailed report and in answering the panel's questions. The panel looks forward to receiving a copy of the benefits realisation plans once complete. The panel welcomes the strategic review of the Council's assets and reassurance that the resources and skills are now in place. The panel asks that the evaluation of active streets be provided to members and details of any ongoing rollout. Um, that information on progress with the Leyland Loop be provided to members of the panel. And finally, that the panel commends the Council's approach to supporting residents during the pandemic and welcomes the reassurance that the Council will continue to proactively provide support. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, can we agree those recommendations? If you just hands up. Thank you. That's agreed. And that now takes us on to item six, the South Civil Corporate Strategy. If I could invite the leader and the interim chief executive to present the item. Thanks, Chair. Um, from I'm, I'm going to read if you if I may, and I, and I will be brief. I'll just read a couple of items out, and it's from the the front page of the revised corporate strategy, and it says as follows: Our our vision is simple: a healthy and happy community flourishing together in a safer and fairer borough that is led by a council recognised for being innovative, financially sustainable, and accountable. Um, it is at the heart of our council and thing we do. It means a relentless focus on creating the conditions, partnerships and services that support improvements in the lives of our residents, ensuring they have opportunities to succeed and thrive. Mr Chairman, we are living through, sorry, living in challenging times that will fundamentally change our borough. Residents, communities and businesses will need more support now and into the future. And hopefully that's something every member of the council would recognise and support. Uh, and if you look at some of the context and challenges that we are now facing, it's on page 36 of your pack, where, you know, empowering people and communities, building a strong and inclusive economy, public service reform and partnership working, performance and transformation and governance. And I think that's one point I would like to make is we've added into the corporate strategy the words accountable and I think after the challenges we've, that we've had chair with the annual governance statements that accountable is very very important and um, what we've also looked at is its presentation because you do run the risk and hopefully you'll agree chair that some of these corporate strategies at times can be very dry and they don't particularly become an easy read and we've worked really hard with Vicky and the team and I really do thank her um, for the for, for our efforts over the last two or three months of working on this with us, that we've got something that we think is easily understandable by a council, but b um, as important to me, maybe more important to our local residents. And we've clearly highlighted there within the new pack the the vision for the the authority and the priorities. And I make you know I, I'm not going to apologise for the fact that we have had to change this after a year in. Um, administration. COVID is a pandemic that will take potentially a long, long time for our community to get to get, get over. And we need to make sure that everything that we do as an authority is aligned to both business and um, community recovery. And on that, unless Gary or Vicky have anything else to add, I'm happy to take any specific questions uh, you and your committee may have, Chair. Uh, anything you would like to add? Uh, nothing from me, Chair. I think that kind of summarises it nicely. I think we've tried to be a bit more succinct and narrow some of the measures down because we seem to be measuring absolutely everything. Um, so we've tried to improve that and hopefully uh, it'll be more succinct and uh, understandable uh, for, uh, for both members and the public. Uh, that was our, our stated intention. Uh, I don't know, Vicky, if you want to add anything. No, I think that covers it. And my final, my, the only thing that I might add would be that we said we would focus on delivery uh, and this paper sets out some of the kind of early scopes for what we intend to deliver so that it's really clear um, for everyone exactly what's expected um, and what you should see delivered over the next 12 months and how that will contribute to the outcomes outlined in the strategy. So I think that's, that's all I would add. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. That does very well touch on what I was about to ask. Um, I'm not a great one for mission statements and visions. Um, 
So as this corporate strategy runs through to the year 2023, what tangible differences will we and our residents see from this document? A fair, and a fair and local economy that works for everyone. Good homes, green spaces, healthy places, thriving communities, chair, you know, and uh, an exemplary council. And that's where we want to be. And under that, there's a number of projects that we need to deliver um, to, to achieve that. And, and, and I'll make a statement that, you know, I do believe that the council has been transformed over the last uh, 16, 18 months. And it's a completely different council to what it was back in 2019 and the challenge is for us to continue that improvement and so by and um, challenging ourselves changing the corporate strategy so that it's absolutely in line with the needs of our businesses and community i think is is it takes us down the road to achieving that chair okay thank you um councillor colton thank you chair uh, one of my pet hates is plain English. Uh, how far do you think we're going with the use of more plain English? Uh, there's uh, examples in some of the notes uh, in front of us. Use of exemplary, exemplary, uh, empowerment, community wealth building, social value etc which i must admit they don't really mean a lot to me can you make a comment please yeah i think again you know there are it's a challenge sometimes i think uh, councillor coulton uh, getting some of the messages across uh, in terms of some of the language uh, i think that's a fair point uh, in terms of uh, uh, members understanding. I think there is some work to do uh, in the background about uh, the cat us setting out exactly what that means. So uh, some of the things about uh, community well building, well, what does that mean? So some of these things are, are, are work in progress. So hopefully uh, as we uh, move into this, uh, this period where we adopt this strategy, we'll set out in a clearer fashion. You've only got, you've got kind of, what you've got there is a summary um, you'll get more detail uh, in the final document and in the final report that sets out exactly what that means and that should help you. We'll try, we'll try and uh, remove some of the corporate speak as well. Okay, yeah. Uh, Councillor Mrs Walton. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question is on page 37, paragraph 11. Mm. What additional budget will be required to implement the refreshed corporate strategy? And how confident can you be of the delivery if the necessary resources are not allocated when the plan is agreed? There's no, thanks Karen for the question. I don't see there's any additional resources required in particular to deliver the corporate strategy. There may be additional resources required in respect to the delivery of some of the individual projects as, as and when that we, we come to look at them. But fundamentally, I think the, the, the single biggest challenge we have as an administration and as a council is we do not know when the COVID impact is going to, is going to leave us. And so it, it's a hard question to, to, to answer. But what I can tell you, Karen, is that we'll be transparent with everything with the monitoring reports and we'll share everything with you to, to try and assist in 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 getting through the the current crisis that we face and i, th I think gary's gary's indicated to speak as well yeah so so um karen one of the things that we're doing slightly differently uh, this year is that the corporate plan will be adopted before the beginning of the financial year if you recall previously it was broadly done together um and um getting an early heads up about priorities and some of the things we're going to be doing it enables us in the period between the adoption of the strategy and the adoption of the budget to work through the very things that you kind of asked about. Have we got the resources in place, the skills, the capacity to deliver the, uh, the ambition in the corporate plan? So you may well see some budget propositions coming forward if that we feel that is necessary to continue to deliver on the corporate plan. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Adams. Thanks, Chair. Um, 
just taking to page 37 and then the, the tables uh, that follow that on 38 and 39, uh, some of the actions in the t in a table do include dates, uh, but others don't. Um, how smart, using the acronym, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound, do you think they are? Uh, and will scrutiny be able to effectively monitor these going forward? Uh, Vicky, does, do you, do you want, want to leave me Vicky then? to answer that one? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, these are early scopes to give an idea of what's included within the project and we'll be developing them up further. Um, we'll have uh, a project management methodology that will help us to set out the detailed timescales and um, who will lead and who will lead on the different aspects of each project. Um, and I would propose that that's something we'll be able to share with the budget and performance scrutiny panel on a, a regular basis so that you can have a look at that and see how we're performing against those timescales and milestones. Um, so this is the early stages. We wanted to give you the detail that we've got. We've worked on it since this project was, uh, this paper was produced um, and we'll have um, detailed timescales and milestones for each project and each one will be smart as will the performance measures that we use to measure progress. Thanks Vicky. I did, I've uh, I completed a 4,000 word essay on smart targets and how they delivered so uh, I'll be uh, very keen to uh, listen to Share that. that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, Councillor Sharples. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, page 41, there's a table there, bottom. How do the corporate plan actions link with the performance indicators? Is there a direct correlation? Could this be presented in a more connected way? Thank you, Chair, again. I'm going to call on Vicky. OK, so the performance measures that we've set out um, aim to show how we're influencing the outcomes of the strategy. So by setting the strategy with some clear priorities, what we want to measure is how are we performing towards achieving those outcomes. The activity that we deliver through the project should support that. But what we want to see is how are we actually influencing a change for our residents and our communities. So the performance measures are a mix of things that we can see changing in the short and medium term, but then looking further ahead, for example, some of the measures around satisfaction and um, levels of achievement and attainment help us to give that longer term view of how things are actually changing and how that's recorded as, in terms of trends um, on, a, on a higher level. So it's a combination of those measures. The delivery of the projects will be able to man monitor and measure to be able to see how those things have been being delivered over time. And then the performance indicator should give us an idea of how we're actually changing things and achieving those long term outcomes that we're setting out to achieve through the strategy. Thank you. Thank you. OK, do we have any questions from members who are not on the panel? I've got a shaken head there and I can't hear anybody else. In which case, Darren, could you possibly um, remind us of uh, our recommendations? Uh, thank you, Chair. Some of the things picked up um, in that item is that the panel thanks the leader and chief executive for engaging the panel with this important document. The panel welcomes the new refreshed corporate strategy and approach being taken, asks that the strategy be revisited to ensure it is in plain English, and the panel welcomes the reassurance uh, that the strategy will be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound and also links to the next budget process. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Um, could I have a show of hands to uh, accept those? I think that's accepted. Thank you. In which case, if we could now move on to item seven, which is the budget monitoring quarter one 2020-2021 uh, report. And if I could invite the cabinet member for finance, assets and resources, Councillor Matthew Tomlinson and the section 151 officer, James Thompson, to present the report. Thanks, Chair. Just checking you, uh, you can hear me. All right. I can. You've frozen a bit on the screen, but I can still hear you. OK. <laughs> Um, OK, so this is the um, report after the first uh, quarter. Um, the headlines uh, in the sort of in the portfolio recommendations were, were forecasting overall to underspend by about £29,000, £30,000. Um, Cabinet will be asked um, to approve some additions to the revenue budget based on decisions that have been taken um, since uh, we set the budget. Um, 
that's to add £20,000 a year uh, to pay for dial a ride. Um, there's some IT costs that we didn't um, foresee. And then to set up a, a fund to explore um, the possibilities of delivering an extra care uh, facility in South Ribble. Um, I suppose if you have a look through the figures, what stands out is the extra money um, that we've been spending because of COVID. Um, so if you look at table uh, one on page 51, um, you know, the current budget says that we were going to spend 13 million seven hundred thousand and now we're saying it's going to be 16 million one hundred fifty one thousand but that is covered by um, government grants the last line on that table that shows you the COVID-19 funding that we've had in um, there is um, table two that uh, gives you some of the forecast variations on staffing costs across the directorates um, and again uh, there's some small variances but um, they, they balance out quite nicely. Um, some information there about the extra revenue costs. Um, we've added in, of course, the, um, the table about staffing vacancies uh, that I was keen for everybody to have an eye on. Um, and the big, I suppose the big change is now in the capital programme. Uh, it's quite clear that the capital programme that we set pre-COVID uh, um, is not going to be delivered um, for a variety of reasons that are explained in the report and indeed some of the projects we might need to revisit altogether and see if they're still the projects that we want to deliver um, in the the new world that we are we are facing um, so um, it is the first quarter um, overall as I said um, it's showing that we'll be very very close to um, the budget in terms of costs um, and with that I'd be happy to answer any questions unless the technical ones and then I shall demure to uh, to James. And well okay thank you. you. Uh, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Mrs Walton. <laughs> thank you Chair. Uh, it's just a general question. It's about certain income streams are obviously down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. How much of a concern is this to you? And what will you do be the overall and future impact on this council? So uh, you're quite right. I mean, if we just looked at, for instance, car parking, which isn't a big chunk of income, um, but the, we're already saying we're going to be over £50,000 down, which is about half of the normal cost that we would expect. So there, there are, and, and as you go across, there's a whole range of issues. Um, a lot of these, you know, we will be able to, um, we will be able to apply to the government for some support on these, and we'll be able to spread any deficit across um, some of those over three years. So it will have to be managed. It's something we'll have to keep an eye on. Um, but also coming out of this, you know, there will be opportunities as well you know, um, you know, we're doing um, a consultation at the moment on car parking charges. Um, so it, it could well be that those budgets need to be realigned. But I think at this stage, your question's a valid one. It's just a bit early to come up with an honest answer. Um, and it's just something we're going to have to keep a watching brief on. OK, thank you. We certainly don't want any dishonest answers, so <laughs> if I could bring uh, Councillor Coulton in here um, with a question on uh, posts that are vacant. Councillor Coulton. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're frozen on my screen, so I can hear you. I'm, I'm moving now. <laughs> uh, there are quite a number of uh, posts vacant. Uh, what is the policy on these vacant posts? Are, are we just going to leave them vacant or are we going to fill them or are we going to remove them? And are we doing an assessment on how the uh, vacancies are affecting our service delivery to our residents? Thank you. OK, thanks. Well, obviously, I'm the finance portfolio holder. So some of these vacancies that are um, in different portfolios, um, those cabinet members would be best 
um, place to answer some of those questions. But as, as far as policy is concerned, uh, if you look through Appendix A, the vast majority of these are live posts that are in the budget that we intend to fill. Um, there has undoubtedly be some delays in filling posts um, during the last three to four months, but they are all intended. Um, if you read Appendix A, uh, the vast majority of them um, are intended to be filled. Um, so they're not, you know, they, these are not things um, that we don't want to fill or that we are artificially keeping vacant to save money. That's not what's happening here. Um, we need these people uh, if we're going to deliver on our priorities. Um, and we, we are attempting to fill as many of them as we can, as quickly as we can. OK, so how is it affecting us then at the moment? Well, I think if you look at um, um, the leader's earlier report on uh, corporate performance, um, we are still delivering on an awful lot of our targets. And I mean, it, it would be disingenuous to say this doesn't affect people in any way. Um, but it may well be that in certain places, um, other people are having to pick up the work um, or uh, some of the jobs are being spread around. But if you, as I said, if you go back to the corporate, um, sorry, the performance monitoring report, it seems to me that at the moment the staff are coping really, really well. But I, I just go back to the point that I made. We're not holding these vacancies artificially to try and save money or anything like that. We do intend to fill them. Um, and hope, well, I know, for instance, the community engagement team are looking to appoint next month to their vacancies. So, yeah, we, are, we do want to fill them, Colin. OK. Uh, if I could bring in, sorry. No, if I could bring in Councillor Adams. Thanks, Chair. Uh, just to take you to page 63, uh, table six. Uh, the council's reserves remain uh, relatively high. How are the earmarked reserves assessed to ensure they are adequate and needed rather than being spent on meeting the needs of our residents? Yeah, so it is, it is um, an assessment that's done um, annually. Um, we talked about why we, uh, for instance, at the last, um, at the budget meeting, we talked about the reasoning behind putting another 600,000 in the business uh, rates um, uh, uh, pot um, and all of these do have to be assessed. Having said that, what I would say is we we debated um, for quite a while now about how much money we're holding, um, and in the in sorry for the cliche, but in the new world that we are facing, I think it will be appropriate to look at all of these reserves um, and see whether um, they are still appropriate. We are we are cash rich. Um, compared to many local authorities in Lancashire. Um, and it, I think it's a very valid question and something that some work needs doing on. OK. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Councillor Sharples. Thank you, Chair. Same page, same table. This time looking at the Borough Investment Account. What are the future plans for this reserve? Sorry, Colin, I, I didn't get the second... Oh, sorry, yeah, the Borough Investment Account, yeah. same table. What are the future plans for this reserve? So the Borough Investment Account, as, as you know, was set up um, to look for opportunities to invest. Um, but not even though it's called the Borough Investment Account, it was opportunities to invest anywhere to try and generate some sort of income for the council. Um, we have changed the policy somewhat on that so that it is to invest in the borough. Um, but we will be also looking for opportunities where we can invest that money to get a return for the council. But it is clearly for opportunities to invest in the borough um, for things that will see ten tangible benefits for our residents. Okay, uh, Councillor Adams again. again. Thanks, Chair. Um, again, same page and same table uh, regarding the repairs and maintenance specifically. Based on the comments made around the stock condition survey being undertaken and the previous investment, is this reserve sufficient? Well, until we get the stock um, condition report back, um, that's a difficult one to answer. Um, it is, it's a significant amount of money. Um, um, 
what I what I'm hoping the stock condition uh, report will do will allow us to have a planned maintenance um, program rather than just have a pot of money sat there to be used reactively. Um, so you know we 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 genuinely don't know what repairs we're going to have to do on a lot of our stock in the next 12 months and so that money sits there just in case and I would much prefer us to have um, an amount of money and know no, what, what we're going to spend it on the plan program and that's the whole call stock conditions. Thank you. Um, if I could take you to page 64 paragraph 52 and the second bullet point Reference is made here to returning the land release external funding for a house building project. Uh, why are we doing this and what have we learned for the future? Okay, so my understanding of this um, fund was um, th this um, was offered to us and you will recall the previous administration um, looking at possibly releasing some playgrounds for building. Um, and clearly we, we, we stopped that and we, we just said we weren't prepared to release the, that land. I think there were two in Leyland and one in Lostock Hall. Um, now, obviously, so we haven't built that those houses on our land and so we're no longer entitled to the grant and so we have to give it back. That's my understanding. I'm sure James can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you don't appear to be being corrected, so if I no, could... Sorry. <laughs> sorry, no, that's correct. correct, it was, uh, right, it was so one public correct. paper. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Chair, one... Chair, could I just oh, clarify oh, something? Yeah, yeah. Chair, if I could just clarify something. We did ask for the funding to be redirected. To, to schemes that we're now bringing forward, um, but that ask was uh, declined. So, hence the money, the funding needs to be returned. Right, okay. Uh, Councillor Mrs Walton. Thank you. Um, my uh, question is on page 73, Appendix C, about the capital programme. I think you've answered most of this, Matthew, but thank you for adding the additional narrative requested at the last meeting. And now the capital programme has been reprofiled. How confident are you that the programme is now deliverable with the, in the agreed timescales and budget? I think, thanks, Karen. Um, I think the whole point of reprofiling is to give us that confidence um, I've, I've always said I would much rather see a capital programme that you know you can deliver rather than over-promising and under-delivering. Um, and now that it has been reprofiled, you know, events, dear by events, can always come along and, and knock you off. But it is now um, a deliverable programme that we can all see and we can all follow through. Um, I'm, I'm saddened really that it's significantly lower than it was in some respects um, because we're here to deliver things for our residents but this is at the moment as we stand is a realistic programme that we should be able to deliver um, a significant proportion of. Okay. Thank you Matthew. Okay thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from members not on the panel? I'm not hearing any indication that we do. No. Darren, could you remind us of our recommendations? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, the panel thanks the Cabinet Member and Section 151 Officer for their report and answering the panel's questions. The panel welcomes the Cabinet Member's commitment to review the levels of earmarked reserves. The panel expressed its appreciation for the Cabinet Member taking into account the panel's feedback with regards to providing greater narrative and transparency with the Capital Programme Monitoring Report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Can we agree those? Uh, hands in the air. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to the end of the meeting. So if I could think, thank everybody who's taken part. Uh, those members not on the panel who've shown an interest and tuned in uh, and members of the cabinet who've attended who I didn't uh, realise were. So thank you to everybody and that is the end of the meeting.
Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the sunshine for the rest of, uh, of as long as it's out. <laughs> <laughs>